You've found a perfect P&O Cruises holiday and you're about to click book, but you're greeted with two different prices, an early saver fare and a select fare. But which one is best for you? In this video, I'll give you all of the details you need to help you make the right decision. An early saver fare offers better value for money without the perks and benefits you can expect from the select fare. By booking an early saver rate, you'll be booking a certain cabin grade on what's known as a guaranteed basis. This means that you don't have the luxury of choosing your cabin location or specific number, just the grade. Your cabin number will usually be allocated to you once your e-tickets and boarding passes have been issued, which is usually two to three weeks before your sailing. Are cabin upgrades possible on an early save affair? The answer to that is yes. While you're not first in line for cabin upgrades, if there is the option of P&O giving you a slightly better grade of cabin or a better location, then this will most likely happen. However, it will all depend on how many passengers are booked onto your sailing and how many of those have booked on a select fare as they have priority for cabin upgrades. At the time of filming this video, I've sailed with P&O Cruises nine times and I've booked on an early saver on six occasions. Every time I've been happy with the cabin grade and location Therefore, it works for me, but there are a few exceptions where I would recommend choosing a select fare over an early saver, but I'll come onto this at the end. When it comes to dining on an early saver rate, you are required to be a bit flexible. Although you can request a preferred dining time at the time of booking, there is no guarantee you'll get it, and you won't find out your chosen time and restaurant venue until you're on board but it is possible to try and change your allocated table size and time on an early saver rate once you're on board. Having said that, it will depend on how busy the cruise is and how many passengers have booked on a select fare whom get priority. p &O Cruises is fast becoming focused on freedom dining, which allows you to join a virtual queue on the p &O Cruises My Holiday app, and you'll be notified when a table of your preference becomes available. While P&O will tell you that select fare guests also get priority on both freedom and club dining options, we never had to wait on either of our recent cruises on Britannia and Iona. Therefore, if you prefer the freedom dining option and don't like the idea of an allocated table each night, the rate you book on probably doesn't matter too much. By booking an early saver or a select fare, you are told by P&O that you have the flexibility to change your booking, but it's not that simple. If you need to cancel or transfer your P&O cruise holiday before the balance due date or 91 days before your cruise departs, then you can cancel with just a loss of deposit or transfer to an alternative sailing. Once upon a time, you had to transfer to a sailing within the next 12 months, the value of the next cruise had to be the same or higher than the original sailing and each time you did so, you would have had to have paid an admin fee. At the time of filming this video, all such rules have been thrown out of the window. You can transfer to any cruise on sale, it can be of any value, and you can transfer as many times as you like, regardless of whether you're on an early saver or a select fare. But if your cruise is within 91 days of departure and you've already cleared your balance, it gets a bit more complicated. On both a select fare and an early saver fare, it gets pretty costly once you're within that 91 days of sailing. If you're within 90 to 57 days of departure, you will incur a loss of 50% of monies paid. And as it gets even nearer to departure, you can see it gets very expensive indeed. The whole idea of this is that P&O would much prefer you to kick the can down the road and transfer to a future sailing, so they've still got your money. It's pretty understandable. They're a business and cash flow is important when they're trying to make up for their losses for the pause in cruise operations between spring 2020 and summer 2021. But I understand people's frustrations if they've got a genuine reason to cancel and they can't retrieve their money. In summary, the early saver is the best option if you're looking for a bargain price and you're not too bothered about the location of your cabin, what time you have dinner, and whether you're sat on a table of six or eight. While there is a good chance you could still get an upgrade and be allocated the perfect cabin and time for dinner, you need to know that this isn't guaranteed and there is a chance you could end up with a cabin or a dining time 
which you aren't happy with. If you'd like a little bit more security and assurance that your holiday will be without issue, you may want to consider the Select Fare. The Select Fare is the most expensive rate with P&O Cruises and allows you to choose your cabin at the time of booking and this can be altered at a later date if you've changed your mind. You'll also be first in line for priority cabin upgrades as well as priority for dining preferences such as seating time and table size. On the Select Fare you'll also be given a choice of having some onboard spending money which will be stated at the time of booking. This can either be given as an amount per cabin or per person. Or alternatively, you can choose between inclusive car parking at the port or return coach travel to Southampton. It's your choice. Select fare guests will also receive free shuttle buses in port when laid on by the cruise line, whereas early saver and saver guests will have to pay additionally for shuttles and they can be a bit overpriced at times. When it comes to the flexibility of cancelling or transferring, you have the same flexibility as those on an early saver. The Select Fair allows you to tailor your holiday more effectively and will offer peace of mind that you've got a good cabin location and that you've got some cruise elements which don't need to be financed on board such as shuttles. However, it does come at a cost and it's important that you weigh up the price difference between booking on an early saver or a Select Fair so you can decide whether it's the best rate for you. You also have what's known as a save affair, which is only available within 90 days of departure and therefore the full balance is payable on booking. This is the cheapest fare type and offers very little in terms of benefits. You can choose your grade of cabin, however like the early save affair you will be allocated your cabin number at the time your tickets are issued or on some occasions on the day of embarkation. You don't get a choice when it comes to dining times, this will be allocated to you once you're on board. When it comes to upgrades on the Saver Fair, you are classed as third priority, therefore the chance of being upgraded is very slim. While this type of fare will offer the best value for money, it's important you know your lack of rights with the Saver Fair. Firstly, you need to be 100% sure you can go, as cancellation will result in a full loss of any money paid regardless of reason and the duration until departure. If you cannot travel due to testing positive for the Big C, you will be allowed to transfer to an alternative sailing at a later date. Or, if there's someone that can potentially take your place, you are entitled to a name change up to four days before embarkation, but this will incur a £20 admin charge, as well as any other charges incurred through hotels, airlines and other holiday extras. So those are the three fare types offered by P&O Cruises. Like all of our videos, they are subjective and opinion based, but for us personally, we tend to book on an early saver rate, as from experience we've never had an issue and we find that the select fare is a bit overpriced when you do a cost analysis of your included benefits. But there are two occasions where we would recommend booking on a select fare. If you're somebody prone to motion sickness, we'd strongly recommend booking on the select fare so you can choose a cabin lower down in the ship preferably at the centre where the ship's motion is at a minimum. Those in cabins located on higher decks, close to the bow or the stern, will feel the motion of the ship at its peak. The other occasion is if you're considering booking a cruise on Iona. As you may have heard, they have balconies lining the promenade deck which offer very little in the way of privacy. If you're like us that would want just a little bit more privacy and wouldn't want to be eye level with the morning marchers, we recommend you consider a select fare if you're booking a balcony cabin on board Iona. Other than that, the early saver would be our choice, but please let us know your preferred rate in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to get a notification whenever we upload a new video, give that bell icon a tap. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.